Alright, this is the uh, last video or set of videos that I'll be making before I see you back at school. It's looking at 1.4, which is uh, a section on nonlinear graphs. Nonlinear means just exactly what it says, not a line graph. So, of course, you remember that line graphs always look like this. They always have that general formula, y equals mx plus c. Now, they could be written around other ways. You might have it um, something like this. 3x equals 5, or we could even have not the equal sign there, but you could have something like minus 1 equals 0. Anything like that is linear. Notice the power on the y is 1. The power on the x is 1. If you've got anything at all, no matter how it's arranged, with y to the power of 1 and x to the power of 1, that is going to be a linear graph. So what we're dealing with in this section is graphs or are graphs that are not linear graphs. So they won't have this situation where you've got a y to the power of 1 with an x to the power of 1. There'll be some other power here. Most of the section deals with when that is a, a 2, in other words when it's an x squared graph. So this sort of situation here, y equals x squared or something to do with the y will be to the power of 1 and the x will be to the power of 2. There may be other x's in there or whatever but that'll be a, par a parabolic graph. The latter part of 1.4 deals with other sorts of graphs. Now we said about uh, some various rules for doing linear graphs that you just had to understand what this m was, that it was the gradient, that this was the y-intercept and if you understood that you could quickly sketch the graph. Sadly that's not the case with x squared type graphs, parabolas. Here we do need to revert back to constructing these tables here, which I just hate doing because it's just uh, so much work. Well, I guess it's, it's not that it's not hard to do, it's just boring. But we'll show you some ways also you can use the calculator uh, to do that. But let's just quickly look at this one here. It's giving you the relationship here that y is equal to x squared. In other words, whatever the uh, y value is, you derive it by taking the x value and squaring it. It then tells you an uh, integer, remember what that is? Whole numbers counting numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, but also in the negative direction and including 0. So here it says uh, construct a table for integer values of x going, and now this, is, this part here is called the domain, that's the x, x values that we're interested in. You need to learn that, that the x values that we're interested in or going to consider is referred to as the domain. The y values is, uh, is called the range. But So the domain goes from minus 3 here right through using integer steps up, steps up by 1 to positive 3 and that's the range we're looking at. Now all we need to do is take these values and plug them into that equation there and work out the y value. So if x is minus 3 we square minus 3, minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9 there's the value of y there. Now we put minus 2 in, minus 2 times minus 2 squaring it is minus and minus is a plus, plus 4 and so on. And so that's how we get that, uh, that, those y values there. Then we just do up our axis and uh, then plot them. So I always like to start in the middle, so 0, when x is 0, y is 0, so that's a point on the graph right there. Next one up, up, down this way, when x, is, uh, when x is minus 1, y is positive 1. When x is minus 1, y is positive 1, so there's that one there. And so on. Going back the other way, when x is 1, y is 1. Now this is interesting with par parabolic graphs. Notice how around about the y-axis there's a duplication. So y is equal to 1, for example, when x is plus or minus 1. Why is that? Well, it's because we're squaring the value. So it doesn't matter whether x is negative or whether it's positive. When we square it, when we do this, minus 2 times minus 2, you're going to end up with a plus with a plus answer. And when it's positive, plus 2 times plus 2, then it's equal to 4. I'll have to write slower. The computer can't keep up. So no matter what, you get the same answer whether x is positive or whether x is negative because it's being squared. So that produces this duplication effect of the y values being the same whether x is positive or negative. That's what gives it this characteristic curve here. 
Right, so that's really all there is to that, where you plotted it. It asks you to notice some of the characteristics of a graph. Now we might speak about that for a moment. You're asked later on to describe the characteristics of uh, a, a x to the power uh, x squared graph parabola, a parabola. Here it talks about a turning point, so you need to understand what that means, and it means exactly what it says: a turning point. If you reach a turning point, you know you're going to change direction. So here, we notice we're coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down, and now we're going up here. So the point at which it stops going down and starts going up. That's called the turning point. There's some other characteristics of uh, these sorts of graphs that you're going to need to know as well. We'll just uh, grab one I prepared earlier. It's not a very good parabola, but that'll have to do. Now, notice here when you've got this graph, there are various things which affect the graph. For example, if you've got uh, not y equals x squared, but rather uh, y equals something else, ax squared. Now the a could be any number at all, 2, 5, 20, minus 16, whatever. So let's say it's 2. What's the effect on that graph of that 2? What does it do? Well it doubles whatever the value you got here. So going back up to here, when we had x is equal to minus 3, x squared is then equal to 9, but now we're going to double that and we would have made it an 18. So that 9 is not going to be there, it's going to be right up here somewhere at 18. So what's the effect on the graph? Well what that does is it stretches the graph. I'll have to do it this way first. Okay, that's it, yeah. It stretches the graph like that. That stretching is actually the proper word for stretching. Oops. The proper word for stretch in, uh, in mathematical terms, it's called a dilation. But the only other time you hear of uh, dilation is you know, to do with medical things. So, uh, for example, your, your eye, when you walk or go into the dark, it dilates, it relaxes, it, it uh, increases in its size. So you end up with, instead of your, your eye you know, looking like that, that, that expands, All right, that center section of your eye. Uh, in fact, if you go into a dark room, wait time for your eyes to adjust and have someone else walk in and suddenly switch on the light and look at you, you look a bit spooky because your eyes dilated, it takes a moment to, to come back down here. So that's the word dilation and it just means to stretch it. Now you can have a dilation in several directions, let's hope this will behave. So we can also get it to dilate uh, that way, so it might look like that uh, as well. So that's their dilations, that number there has that effect on it. Um, what else? Let's see if I can put it back to the way it was. Can I do that? Uh, yeah, something like that. What else can happen? Well, we can also have a translation, and uh, in there, and the translation is it's simply being moved to a different position. It could be moved along here, or it could be moved up and down here. Now this is created by adding on to these values. So something like y equals um, x squared plus five. What would the plus 5 do? The plus 5 will move the whole thing, it'll take whatever your x values were, and it's going to add 5. So this one here, the x squared will produce the 9, plus 5 will add 5 onto it, it'll move it up to 14. So this whole graph would be shifted up 5 units, that there being from 0 up to 5. And what that's called is a translation. It's translated, it's moved from one place uh, to another. So in the y direction, that produces a, a translation that way. Um, however, you can also get a translation in the x direction, and that would occur if you did this. And this becomes a little bit weird because you'd said, well, OK, look, the plus 5 moved at plus 5 in the y direction. This one moves at 5, but it moves at whatever the opposite to that is. So a plus 5 here will move it minus 5 that way. Or if that was a minus 5, then it would have moved it 5 up that way. So that also produces a translation when you add a number either here, that's a, y, a translation in the y direction, or here, a translation in the x direction. The only other thing that's left is a reflection. And a reflection, now my notes in here aren't so good, but hopefully because I've, I'm explaining as you go, you'll be able to pick this up. A reflection is just produced by a change of sign. So 
uh, instead of having y equals x squared, we have y equals minus x squared. And what this does is it causes a reflection. Now, close your eyes for a second because I'm actually going to rotate it to produce this only because it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't do it. So it's just a flipping down. It's not a turning around, that's a rotation. We don't actually do rotations in year 11, so you don't have to worry about that. So there are four sorts of movements. Dilation, stretching, translation, just simply shifting it about without changing the, um, without changing the shape of the graph. And then there is a reflection, which is just like a mirror. So it'll be the opposite. So if it was up here, if it's a reflection about the x-axis, then it'll flip downwards. If it was a reflection about the y-axis, Oops, let's rotate it around again here. If it was a reflection about the y-axis, well, frankly, this wouldn't make any difference because these are exact mirror images of each other, the side here. If you had, say, I don't know, a line, however, uh, and you wanted to uh, reflect that, well, a reflection of that line would look like that, still going through the centre, of course. Um, that would be a reflection of that particular line. Let's get rid of that. So they're the things you have to worry about. Uh, in describing them. So you talk about a dilation, that's a stretching, translating, shifting it around without changing the shape, or a reflection where the thing is flipped over, usually in the direction of the x-axis or of the y-axis, and sometimes we might be nasty to you and do it around the uh, line y equals x, but we'll worry about that if we get to it.